everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that week break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else. Really, we were just talking about a puppet show before we went live, so prepare yourselves. This might be <laughs> might turn in, turn into comedy all the way down. Joe, how are you doing? Yeah, I am doing very well. Uh, me and my Steve husband had a great time at Disneyland last weekend. And we've been going every month, and it's been wonderful, despite the pandemic, because we're both being careful and are fully vaccinated and stay away from the crowds <laughs> so and keep our masks on <laughs> so, so we can have fun. <laughs> Was it you or Steve? Um, it might have been Saturday night when we were getting ready to do the show. There just came like a tsunami of like photos from Disneyland that just <laughs> yeah. landed in. You guys saw the fireworks and all the other fun stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, we saw that. And actually, I showed you the inside of It's a Small World. You know, it had been flooded and they reopened it and it had its beautiful holiday overlay and they're extending running it with the holiday overlay because of the flooding. So Ooh. it was nice to get back on that ride. <laughs> That's a small world. A bunch of small rooms filled with small houses. And, and and small little characters that dance and move and surf and hula. <laughs> that truly, honestly, and genuinely sounds horrifying. Uh, yeah. I actually know a couple of people that worked on some of the characters in It's a Small World. So, <laughs> Do they have, when I think about the small world, um, it might have been this Simpsons. Do they play like it's a small world music or something like that? Yeah, it's a small world. Well, what's nice is normally it's just, it's a small world after all, all year mm. long. But at Christmas time, they um, change it up uh, from it's a small world to jingle bells. And then they add uh, uh, different uh, music from different countries in uh, to the mix. Like when you go to the, the um, Spanish area or... Or the Australian area, they add in different music. It's really cool. Right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, unicorns and sharpies. I'm going to make sense of this. I, uh, <laughs> I'm holding a unicorn. I'm holding a mark. A mark of unicorn in my hand for the video viewers. This is something I've been trying ah. to get a hold of since 2019. These came out. This is a Motu M4 audio interface for computers. There is a connection there. Interesting piece of kit, but, you know, they were announced in 2019. Why I was fascinated about this is because Motu doesn't, has never made a, I don't like using the word budget, but that's what they are. You know, like the Focusrite mm -hmm. Scarlet series. Cost-reduced audio interfaces, which, don't get angry at me, they're glorified sound cards is what these things are. Oh, okay. And that's, that's not a bad thing, because I, Walk back and explain why on that. But, you know, 2019, I'm like, I'm going to wait a few weeks, let some reviews come out. Then a thing happened in 2019, and, you know, the global supply chain kind of collapsed. So here we are in 2022, and I was able to pick one up. And I've done all the primary filming and recording on that. I get all the bits, I got to stick them together. So hopefully by the end of the week, I will uh, let everyone know if it does, in fact, Linux, which it should, it's class compliant, but how well it does. So uh, I'll have that up probably nice. definitely tomorrow evening for patrons, no later than Friday. But speaking of Friday, we are going to get back to it. Um, I want to mm -hmm. announce Alan, Mr. Foxdog, and Striders, the winners of the first 2022, 2022 <laughs> Get Good Grandpa Point series. It was kind of Kind of interesting, a little harrowing at the end. Uh, <laughs> nine people show up just for the first one. And uh, what we do is we race around goofy tracks with loops and stuff like that. And indestructible cars. That is, uh, it's kind of like Hot Wheels or um, I think like Rocket League type physics. A little bit of racing yeah. involved. And it's about how many times you can get around and what speed and you can complete it at. And there's reasonable tracks and psychotic tracks. And we're doing Trek Mania 2 Stadium. You're welcome to join in. We did our practice session last night and that was just you know seeing what laps cause laps rotate each and every week and uh yeah it's gonna be fun that's gonna be going down at 7 30 this friday we'll be live on twitch i'll have after shows and audio up if you want to pop nice. in and say some words and words of encouragement that we 
encouragement <laughs> that we say to each other while we're racing. It's all in good fun. If you can at the same time, like, uh, talk some smack and give some praise because that's what we do. Every, everyone's cheering for each other to, uh, definitely yeah. get better than we currently are. And it'll give your brain and your finger <laughs> digits quite the workout, which is, uh, I, I think it's good Jill for people of our advanced age. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you did a, I was really proud of you yesterday. You did a good job at, uh, jumping from, uh, from one wall to the next. <laughs> <laughs> You with say your that. Car. I left out the part with the other 12 times there was a smashing into the wall trying to get over oh. it. That's the fun of it. It's a very comical game. And uh, yeah, thanks for being proud of me. I'll see if I can make you proud on Friday. Probably not. I'll Yay. choke and wreck everywhere. So. <laughs> Let's start this week off with something that I haven't heard a lot about in a long time. This used to be the internet's dark. This, this was the arch of its day in popularity yeah absolutely it was one of the best and it still is one of the best uh distros to give a beginner in linux so linux mint 20.3 una has been released and it has a new look and some new features and 20.0.3 linux mint is a long-term support release based on ubuntu 20.04 lts and is supported until 2025 awesome and the ui actually has been improved with larger title bar buttons rounded corners a much cleaner theme and support for woohoo dark mode and it and it looks nice on all the apps too. It looks who uses really good. dark mode who oh gosh i do <laughs> i do some some people uh dark mode is doesn't work as well for their eyes and some people um like lighter but i prefer dark even though i only see out of one eye <laughs> i prefer the dark because my one eye that sees really sees the best is really sensitive to light so i like dark mode <laughs> i know ven likes the dark mode too <laughs> And the, the other cool thing about Linux Mint 20.3 is it introduces a brand new document manager app called Thingy. <laughs> it's a funny name. Yes, Thingy. It gives you quick access to your favorite and recently opened documents and actually keeps track of your reading progress, which is really cool. I had uh, fun going through it and, and uh, read a PDF and hadn't finished it and then continued reading it. It's really cool. And it also comes with the latest version of Cinnamon 5.2. And, but if you don't want to use Cinnamon, you can download the Linux Mint 20.3 XFC edition with XFCE 4.16 or the Mate edition, which ships with Mate 1.26. So yeah, it, we needed to talk about Linux Mint in this new release. Moral of the story is download awesome. 4.16. Uh, XFCE for that. <laughs> Uh, I, I was reading through this and, you know, a lot of work has went into like title bars, corners, accent colors, and all this stuff that mm -hmm. I'm fascinated, probably some, well, no, I'm a hundred percent fascinated because none of that bothers me. None of that ever registers, but that can be important for some people because mm -hmm. Jill was fighting with a corner bar before we went live, just so cursing true. up a storm, trying to get a hold to it and to drag it down and, yeah, XFCE sometimes has issues with grabbing corners because <laughs> the icon it, it it's so my the pixels are so minute uh, oh, yeah. for selecting that that drag icon. But if you change the different themes, it does improve that <laughs> depending we, on the theme. <laughs> we got on a complete side jag of like remember compass and how harsh it was back then. We found oh, Wayfire. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Wayfire. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty dope. Um, dark mode for celluloid. That's neat. Uh, hypnotic X viewer picks and gnome terminal. I'll get the dark modes, which I was absolutely joking. I dark mode, all the things I even have the flag set and anything chromium and <laughs> Firefox. So everything's in dark mode. I'll deal with the jacked up colors on half the things. Uh, HP lip was upgraded to three twenty one eight. Uh, so what is that? If you think about it, it makes sense. It's the, uh, HP printer scanner support utility. Which yeah, very nice. You know, in the current mm -hmm. time, you might have had to break out a scanner or printer because you're working at home. No, there is that. Mints 
I mean, I'm glad mm-hmm. it's still there. It was interesting to have been on the ride so long. If that was the first, mint was the pop of its day. I think everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Is yeah, looking for, good. you know, you got to have that recommendation for your friends, family, or enemies. What Linux distribution you're going to give them. And, you know, a lot of people are going to jump out and they're going to say Arch. But no, no, no. If we don't want to scare them away. Mint's still a perfectly <laughs> valid option along with Pop! OS, I think. Yeah. And, you know, in those early years, it had one of the fastest installers. I mean, it would, you could install Linux in five to six minutes. Mm. And, you know, now they're, they're all at that speed, but, you know, anywhere between five and ten minutes. But Mint was just it had a, a great, you know, and still ha- ha- does have a wonderful installer, but it was so fast. Mm. And uh, that, I, that, that really helped launch it. <laughs> no, I forget who posted it earlier in Discord. I think it might have been Arthur, and he was posting about, uh, the speaking of installers, that Red Hat was going to be switching from Anaconda to um, something uh, web-based. Yeah, yeah. Um, very oh, curious I'm forgetting about the name that. of it, yeah. I'm very curious about <laughs> it. It's 100% something I would play with when it comes to GUI and something like, do I have text-only mode? Just because I'm old and again, curses is real quick to get through that. But that is brilliant. Might have been Daisy. All right. That is okay. something <laughs> to look forward to. I want to call this the stimula. In fact, that's what I call it in my brain space. <laughs> yes. I just do. Good name, Ben. My brain reads this 100% as stimula, the stimula one, but it's really the stimula one. They've released pricing and the Kickstarter <laughs> goals. This is the standalone wireless Linux powered VR headset of Woo-hoo. business. And it ain't cheap. It's not. It's not. Um, backup price, 2700 bucks. MSRP, $3,400. Available for as low as mm-hmm. $2,499. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because they've done a good. They've done something that gives me hope. And the project's success because they come right out of the gate and they're saying, hey, man, we need to raise two point five million dollars to even start thinking about cranking these toasters out to put them on your head. And that's yeah. going to be selling eight hundred ninety two headsets at twenty seven hundred dollars. That's just their break even point. But they know this and they communicate that to you, the potential backer. It's a very realistic price for a company trying to ship a relatively small batch of headsets. Versus how many times have we seen Kickstarter projects like, oh, we're going to do mm-hmm. this and it's going to be 500 bucks, 600 bucks. And there's no way they could ever ship it at that. But they do the Kickstarter to show that there's interest in hopes of picking up, you know, outside backing financing from other companies. And when that never happens, you'll see the Kickstarter Indiegogo project like linger on in zombie mode for another year or two years and just disappear with the money. They slot, they slot are planning to actually ship a product. And that's why the pricing is yeah. as it is. A Linux And it inclu- includes the operating system. Yeah. So I, I that, mean, that does make it unique. It's very mm-hmm. ambitious. Now the goal is ambitious at that price. Uh, if Because your VR is a niche. This is a niche inside of a niche. But, but, um, yeah, I do wonder if the market is there to support this. It's going to be curious to watch. I have infinitely more faith in a company or a group of people who've come together. They've done the maths to sit back. And this is what it's going to take to actually ship this. Cause I really get the impression from this crew that they want to make this and get it in your hands. Very expensive for a dev kit though, Joe. Yeah, very much. So um, I was impressed. Uh, Ven, did you notice the resolution is 244.8 by 244.8 per eye, which mm. makes it a higher resolution per eye than the valve index and the oculus quest too yeah. i was pretty impressed by that because that that that's been definitely a problem is to have higher resolution in the vr headsets and especially for this one's use because this one you know is going to be used to um peruse around your 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 linux de- desktop with 2d linux apps and so you need to have something comfortable <laughs> for that and you know a few weeks ago we had talked about the Simula One headset, which will be the first VR headset to include a Linux-based OS, or Simula OS, which um, Simula OS will allow you uh, to run the OS on um, current generation headsets like the the Vive and Oculus. So it's it's really an ambitious project, uh, 
And I was really impressed uh, that they announced it this quick. <laughs> Because <laughs> we just heard about it a few weeks ago. <laughs> exactly. They were just bringing it up. They're like, hey, yeah, we have something in the plan. Be honest <laughs> with yourselves. Can you really, truly put a price <laughs> on having a waffle on your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a nook. <laughs> no. I like An it. Intel nook. <laughs> no. I'd love to play around with one of these because this is fulfilling the Absolutely. niche with it. A niche. I'm like, VR is silly. We'll give you a bunch of virtual desktops. You have my interest. Mm -hmm. um, high resolution. If it's going to look decent, something to play with, something to develop on, something to hack with. As I famously yeah. said, I would get more monitors if I didn't have to buy more monitors. Yeah. No, it's so true. So true. Which, uh, no, this, this can revolutionize, honestly, you know, and help people that have, for instance, eye disabilities. I know there's a company working on a VR headset for those of us who are, um, uh, disabled with uh, vision mm -hmm. and it could also help in, with, with people who have hearing loss and, you know, all kinds of applications for the medical industry and handicapped and just. Yeah, um, people with autism. They've proven that VR helps with the uh, kids with autism. Well, I think they're going to definitely shy away from any medical claims, but yeah, I am I curious. So, yeah. I mean, it does have an <laughs> AR camera by what I'm looking at on their main page. I'm assuming that's what that is because the uh, person was trying to put their straw, sippy straw, back into their coffee cup. I'm curious how yes. like, that perception is going to work. Yeah, them. yeah, definitely. Keep up the fantastic work. We'll be watching it. I'm interesting to, you know, if you're thinking about backing it, send us a note. Let, let us know your reason and reasoning behind it. But Carol 516 mm -hmm. is out. It It's all about, we're just going to talk about video games, Jill. That's what we're going to do. Just a bunch no. of video games. <laughs> so, yes, Linux kernel 5.16 has been released with lots of improvements to gaming, as Ben said. Hardware support for future for future tech and performance improvements for CPUs and GPUs. So there's going to be better performance on laptops with Ryzen processors and Radeon graphics. Woohoo! But one of the big pieces of news here is Linux 5.16 introduces a new kernel system called Futex 2. This feature actually could help improve the Linux gaming experience for native Linux ports as well. But for Windows games running via Wine, it matches a system call with a specific functionality in Windows, which should help to actually reduce CPU utilization and increase frames per second for many games. And it was contributed by the friendly folks at Collabora. Awesome. Oh, all right. So as I was showing everybody in the video mm -hmm. version, uh, it now supports purple PS5 controllers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we currently have no information on whether or not it supports red, white, or blue ones, but purple. Purple is firmly <laughs> supported along with your Nintendo Switch controllers out of the box with 5X16. So. Yeah. That's Five really, really that. awesome. And Sony, yeah. Sony sent in the uh, Cody bits to make sure it works. For that. Like, yeah, I'm like, all right, good on you, Sony. Yeah. Good on you. Uh, a couple of things I'm interested in, I don't want to play around with. Lower latency. You think kernel 515 was lowering USB audio latency. Nay, this is going to do an even better job. I will say I compiled a 516 RC8 last week. Wouldn't even boot on Jackbox. I didn't look into it because mm. I was busy and I didn't have time to like go find a monitor to plug into the box or read the logs. Or I was like, ah, I'll play with it when it's officially out. Maybe I'll go back and uh, see if I have to completely redo all of my benchmarks and stuff. But couple of fixes mm -hmm. for the Apple M1 hardware ecosystem as well. Yeah, that's very exciting. Woohoo. I want to get excited about it. What, here's what yeah. we all really want. We want, to, we want the <laughs> next gen of the Apple M1 stuff to go out so we can buy the um, current gen stuff on cheap used. So we Cheaper, can play yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I want to play. Well, yeah, that... that that's going to be very exciting. And, and we're definitely going to have uh, desktop Linux uh, fully functional on the M1, I'm sure, this year uh, <laughs> with the progress they're making. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what? You don't need just desktop Linux on your operating system on your big chunky PC. You can carry around Linux in your pocket. Full desktop, too, if you're brave enough. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about the Pinephone Explorer edition of the Pro. Pre-orders open January of the 11th. And this company... This company, I remember when they were first doing the announcements, like, hey, we're thinking about doing some low-cost Linux hardware so people can just get their hands on it, start playing with it, start making stuff. I say, oh, you wouldn't be the first to say you're going to do that, but they have proven mm -hmm. time and time again that they can deliver product, and I will keep saying that is the hardest part of the equation. Explorer Edition, yeah. three ninety nine. Ninety nine. dollars so you, What a great price. <laughs> they've kind of explained it as it's everything... From the Pinephone Pro, but better. And, you know, it's got a new rock chip, 64-bit SOC, 4 gigs RAM, 1440 screen, no option to swap. Somebody asked. And they're like, hey, can I just buy a board and swap it out with my original? No, that's not going to work. And um, it's as open as the original Pinephone. So there's no, you know, spooky new blobs mm -hmm. or anything to worry about. 3,000 milliamp battery life. Uh, yeah, I mean... You, you got to tell me more about this, Joe, because I'm just not, it's, it's too small. It's too small for me. I, I would break the poor little thing if I. Oh, well, they, they, they purposely, actually, they made the Pinephone Pro, Pro a little thicker so that it would be easier to, you know, put in a new battery and, you know, make modifications to it. But going back to the price point at 399 that that's awesome because that's less than half the price of some flagship phones priced at eight hundred to a thousand. And when the software gets more refined, this is the Linux phone that you can share with, you know, family and friends. And it's got, gosh, so many uh, great fe features. You know, it's got a hexacore processor at one point five gigahertz, uh, four gigabytes of LPDDR for RAM, uh, Gorilla Grant. Uh, glass, a 13 megapixel pixel, uh, main uh, camera, and it's completely, um, it share it can share the same accessories with the original Pine phone. So it's a win-win all around. Yeah, it's a bit more expensive, but it's closer to a flagship phone. <laughs> so it's well worth it. <laughs> it is. And Pine phone, they're very clear. They're like, yo, this is still development stuff. This, if you rely on proprietary apps in your ecosystem, be it on iOS or Android, it's not going to work on this. And they want you to be very yeah. much aware of that. So, yeah. And the legend has it, they can even make calls, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> I jump when one of my mobile devices rings. Like, what? <laughs> All right, right, right. You can do that. Hmm. Fascinating. Dell XPS. Dell's been loving the Linux for a long time. Yeah, so this is something Dell in, unveiled at um, CES uh, 2022 uh, just last week, the XPS 13 Plus. It has a radical new design, but it will still include a developer version option um, preloaded with Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So no worries there. We still so have our Ubuntu radical. love. That looks like <laughs> nothing I've ever seen before. I know. Dell, hire so me for it, your marketing it, team. I'll be, I'll be the new Dell guy. So radical. So radical. Well, it does because it has a edge to edge design um, of the screen and the keyboard. And um, it's it replaces the row of physical function keys along the top with capacitive ones. And they actually, this is very, very different <laughs> from previous versions, but they uh, glow white nicely and act actually are easy to see. But my one complaint is that it has a center hidden borderless haptic trackpad, which has no visual hints or cues. And, you know, people will either love it or hate it. I think if I, I use this laptop, I would get used to it. But that would kind of drive me up the wall, not having visual hints. But I'm sure that trackpad is actually beautiful and seamless nonetheless, just like their previous versions. <laughs> when, when I think about like a touchpad like that or a touch bar, one might even call Apple. Uh, yeah. Stop putting them on the new model. <laughs> like, oh, people don't like these. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but what, what is awesome, it's got a 12th gen Intor core uh, processors um, in it and up to, you can get up to 32 gigabytes of LPDD 
DDR5 RAM and up at, up to two uh, terabyte PCIe SSD. So it's honestly, it's it's the XPS 13 is almost a workstation other than the onboard uh, Intel GPU graphics, which the Iris graphics are much better mm -hmm. than they used to be. But this is getting closer to a workstation level laptop at that, that thin and light, you know, uh, form factor. Well, I have to see. I mean, I'm a kind of a different, I'm, I'm not a fan of bezels, but especially in something like laptops, I look at that, and especially around the screen. And when you start moving like <laughs> stuff towards yeah. the edges, I immediately go, gravity always wins. And yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're screwed, you don't have any, but it can't take the bump. It's like, well, just broke that. Why? I dropped it. We dummy, you dropped your laptop. Still, I want to pretend yeah. the bezel would have saved that. Touch bar. Here's what I want. Um, okay, yeah. you're wondering about pricing. Eleven hundred. Uh, well, let's just say twelve hundred bucks US, and uh, that's going to be eight hundred eighty-five pounds or one thousand six hundred and fifty-five mm -hmm. Aussie dollar reduce. Um, <laughs> I mean, not not incredibly expensive. Thirteen inches, still too small. Yeah, it is very tiny. But it would but fit it is you. Nice. Like I, yeah. could, I could see you rocking a thirteen inch. <laughs> I do have a thirteen inch laptop. In fact, it's right right behind me my pink msi prestige and it also has a uh, no bevel on on the screen right. and honestly it is hard for me to use it's a little too small <laughs> so i often hook it up to another monitor <laughs> that's not uh, but i mean you could you would stand a chance of using the keyboard Oh yeah, no, the keyboard, actually those, the XPS 13 keyboards are beautiful. I have played with them before right? and um, those are very nice. And the screen, it's perfect for, honestly, for gameplay and uh, watching movies for me, media but it's just hard for, yeah, media consumption. But for productivity for me, it's a little hard, but for most people who have good vision, it's perfect. And they have, it has a beautiful screen. <laughs> so no problem there. But it, this version doesn't have a headphone jack. And no, that <laughs> well, they had drives to, me up the wall. They, they had to make room for the haptic buzzy stuff that makes people jump yeah. the first time they deal with it. Like, yeah, what was that? <laughs> well, Dell said it's because it's thinner, but no, it, it, it's, it's, it's still thick enough to include a headphone jack. It's just, they're going the way of wireless and Bluetooth. So that's for, just the way of things right kids now. Use. That's all I, all, yeah. so many audio questions. I again, I'm like, hey, my Bluetooth headsets don't work with Linux and mm -hmm. I never finish laughing long enough to write them back. Like, I, I <laughs> have fun. Have fun. Yeah. We use a wire. Uh, <laughs> now, it's pretty select looking. I dig it reasonably priced, it but is. at 13 inches, I can palm a 10 inch tablet. So, yeah. Easily. I, yeah. I, I, can't, <laughs> I physically can't use the keyboards, or as it's been said, that is the most adorable like, delete expletive thing I've ever seen by one person is me trying to use a smaller laptop because it was kind of comical. Yeah, yeah. Your hands are a bit big. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I keep telling you, it's an For optical me. illusion. I just have really small wrists. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I can still use the Asus EPC uh, keyboard. Uh, a lot of people, that one is way too small. Oh, dude, I give them, up. I, I have no problem with that one. I <laughs> numbers when it gets like <laughs> yeah. that. I, yeah. I'm a realist. I'm a realist. Uh, all right. Hey, <laughs> we're going to be talking about a Raspberry Pi running BBC Basic. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you making this possible. Loud, live, commercial, free. And I do mean that. No. No influence, no ads, nothing. We just show up, talk about what we want. We want to say something positive, mm -hmm. we say something positive, but if we got to say something <laughs> negative, there's no like, hmm, that might upset one of the, um, yeah, let's not say anything. Never crosses my mind. And <laughs> to, to the Aww. chagrin of some people, like, Vin, you're not always 100% positive. I know it's called being honest. You should try that with your audience sometimes. Um, yeah. <laughs> If you want to kick Aww. us some coin, you get a bunch of bonus sodas over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. I'm doing including access to our Discord where we hang out and we just be weird. We do, Joe. Yeah. We be weird constantly we six days a week. I mean, I wake oh. up in the morning and that conversation doesn't stop. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's Discord keeps going. We have a very active community and I love that. And I love that it's 24 hours too. And Jill, <laughs> because when you can't sleep at night, it's it's fun to get updated in our Discord. <laughs> Jill will creep on you, find out your birthday and remind you. Yes, exactly. In fact, I want to wish... Our one of our favorite patrons and our advisor 
for, for us here at Linux Gamecast, Artharon. It's his 25th birthday. Happy birthday, Artharon. And thank you f- for all the years of submitting stories uh, that we talk about here on LWW, including the Linux kernel, the recent Linux kernel. We just, we love you. And you're one of the nicest, kindest people. And, you know, do a, you, you honestly do a lot of work for us. <laughs> You do. He's all right. <laughs> Vince, like... <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> no, man. Happy birthday, man. Um, yeah, we got that. We got Amazon wish list, bunch of stuff. If you want to buy something for the studio, it ends up on this board back here where you will be shamed for your fiscal responsibility. I highly advise against it because it will happen. Uh, Jill's got one. It's little plushy pink things, usually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And glowing. <laughs> I'm just penguins. saying, if there's ever a time for a dark mode, it's for browsing her Amazon wish list, man. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Um, <laughs> well, that 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 uh, glowing penguin over there is from Artharon. He got I me mean, that a while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Monster. Um, <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, Twitch.tv. Watch us live. We do this at 3 p.m. every Wednesday. Uh, we do a gaming show on Saturdays. Been doing that for about 10 years. That's where the party is. That kicks off at 7.30. You know the bonuses. We get show note access. We do an extra hour for content each and every week. We do a behind-the-scenes production meeting, pre-pre-super shows, mm-hmm. which is that, but it's also mixed in with movie, television, film reviews, where we discuss the feasibility of doing a riff track style um, track over the acclaimed movie Roller Gator. Ah, <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> And make sure to check out Saturday's show also, because that's where you can see Pedro Mateus. We miss him here on LWW. You've but been you jinxed, can catch Pedro. Him there. Something's going to happen to you this week. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to apologize. It's going to be me and, me and Jordan like, oh, we're sorry. Sorry. Someone promised Pedro <laughs> was going to be on the show. Oh. No, we wouldn't do that. Probably wouldn't do that. We would absolutely do that for a bit. All right. So, uh, yeah, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Thank you. Stick around for your name in the credits. Um, what do we got to do? Oh, right. I found this atrocity. Ah. Uh, ooh. That looks like kind of. Ooh. What? That doesn't look good. Is that potatoes and pie no, or peanuts? No, that, I guess that, it's that's peanuts. Carol I don't know. Peanut. Ew. Right. <laughs> Actually, that would be good if it's caramel. It has it's if it's caramelized well, peanuts. Caramel, are, are, are peanuts a little too close to vegetables for you? Is that what you're communicating? Yeah. No, I actually I don't. I just don't like peanuts, but I like almonds and cashews. <laughs> well, what if I replace the peanuts with I don't know peas? That would work. That would be okay, but not on pie. Oh. Although, unless it's unless it's. Uh, Oh, a toad in a hole, like an English uh, uh, pot pie (laughs) kind of thing. Yeah. (laughs) I like those. (laughs) Do you like peanut brittle? Yes, I do. I just don't like, I just don't like uh, peanuts by themselves, but I like them in mixed in caramel and candied and all the things. So. And peanut butter cups. (laughs) Well, let's see. So you just don't, do you ever think about just getting a blindfold and just going to town? Uh, no. <laughs> peanuts are one of those things um i i genuinely almost made myself ill i bought a uh like a big oh wow container of wasabi <laughs> peanuts oh yeah i can see you liking those yeah just out of curiosity <laughs> oh. i'm like well let's try that yeah. open it up and eat i eat that whole thing i ate the whole thing you I, got I, an upset stomach no i was just too full to move <laughs> I was paralyzed. Like, I have to go lay down. My body was like, what are yeah. you doing? I'm like, it was delicious. I regret nothing. And uh, yeah, so I bought that once. Now, raspberry pies are something that everyone encounters at some point, if you're in this industry in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Even if you don't plan on yes. doing anything with it, you got to buy one. You know, you know, we show up and like, hey, where's your raspberry pie? And you're like, oh, hang on. Here it is. I'm like, all right, it's cool. Um, I still like the way they address the raspberry pie in uh, Mr. Robot. I think it was the first episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, where yeah. Where the um, <laughs> guy's holding up, and he's like, this is an advanced hacking. And he's like, that's raspberry pie, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just a raspberry yeah, it's, it's pie. It's a raspberry yes. pie. Just be quiet. We all know what that is. Um, <laughs> Alan Pope has decided to get basic with his pie. 
and booting directly nice. to basic and just kind of outlines this exercise and I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's, here's where I'm at it. This is nostalgia <laughs> on hard mode, 100%, because, you know, Alan Walsh is like, remember when you just got on computers and they would boot from the ROM, like right into basic or anything yeah. like that. And I'm like, yeah, unfortunately I do because I'm that old. Well, he, he's hacked up a pie that boots BBC basic. I mean, absolutely. Reading through this, my brain's going, why? But, <laughs> but. It's also at the same time screaming in tandem. That's that's neat. That's neat. I can respect this. I'm like, yeah, all right. Come on. I mean, what? Because how many cool things get created with like, just why not? I mean, there, there's your response yeah. to that. And his snap has not been published, and but all the needed bits will exist on the GitHub. They're publicly available. I'll put a link in the show notes. Yeah. For that, but look, yeah. I mean, yeah. He ended up using Ubuntu server with it as well, and. You know, of course, it is a snap, so it does boot a little slow when it starts. But once it gets going, then then you can go um, go to for next uh, run peek and poke. <laughs> so you can do all the things. And yes, this is awesome because Popey really did go on a basic mission, <laughs> and he his his goal was to boot this Sinclair. Well, not this particular right. one. But the one based off of it, his Sinclair ZX81, this is actually the Timex Sinclair 1000. And this was, you know, a slightly modified version of the Sinclair ZX81 that Popey started with. That was his first uh, computer as a kid. And it's actually kind of many of ours uh, first computers. This particular one um, is not my first, but it was one of the earliest, definitely. And uh, I, I think this was just such a cool project, Popey. And um, I wanted to also wish him happy birthday because this weekend he turns 50. And welcome to the Golden Club, Popey, because I turned 50 last year. So, <laughs> so that's cool. I think you're going to miss this opportunity to call him a youngster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aw. So I think that was really cool. He, uh, um, you know, wanted to use a, a Sinclair Basic on his Raspberry Pi 400, which I also have here because I love that computer too. And it's a little bit bigger, actually, than the Sinclair uh, 1000. A little bit more powerful, too. But yeah, and, and, and quite a bit more powerful, but this is such, you know, going back to computers and keyboards is that was such a brilliant idea of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So it's, it's like using our old micros or old, our old Commodore 64s and our Sinclairs. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting nostalgia yeah. all over your keyboard. Have to wipe it off. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, I had actually gotten gotten my Timex Sinclair 1000 out because it was uh, Clive Sinclair um, had passed away last September. So I had gotten it out and was playing with it and, and did some programs on it, you know, just to kind of celebrate um, Clive Sinclair. I 100% <laughs> find all the stuff fascinating. I find it neat. And uh, but I grew up with this. I'm done with it. I'm out. I don't have an ounce of any of this. You show me a Sinclair, you, you show me an Amstrad. I'm like, why haven't yeah. you thrown that away? Seriously. Come on. No. <laughs> this is part of my uh, cherished computers of over 600 now. Nope. So, mm -mm. and it still works beautifully. I don't And I even have the original box I and look the manual. At it and, and I go, can <laughs> I do anything useful with this? Nope. Bye. Oh. Well, I can put, I, I, okay, I hang can on. do hey, make Jill, a program. Before you say anything, Jill, you got to prepare everyone for the <laughs> mental gymnastics you're about to do. You might want to yes. stretch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can create a program with your, your name that goes across the street, screen vertically or horizontally and just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then we can add stone into the picture or, and then we can add Venn Stone was named after the Venn diagram. <laughs> I was named after the creator of the diagram. Yes, you were. <laughs> the creator of the diagram. 
Oh, who knows? That's who okay. knows? Maybe that's the real origin story. No, you were named after two circles. Yeah, <laughs> two circles. <laughs> that entire... Oh, that's okay. I was named after the, the story of Jack and Jill. My brother's name is Jack, yes. So, there we go. It's Jack and Jill. <laughs> True stories. Now, <laughs> yes. we've got to bounce out of here. We're starting to run a little bit long, but thanks for showing up. If you want to get in touch with us, use the contact button. I got to update some things on the website. I saw um, Frosty in Discord. I was like, eh, it's not mobile responsive with my super resolution <laughs> mobile screens that are like 2K and six inches these days, you kids. So um, I got to fix a little viewpoint mm -hmm. issue to make the menus and everything work. But tap the contact button, send us a note, question, thoughts, hints. I like tell, tell everyone why I'm wrong and I should cherish old computers that <laughs> don't do anything and you just put them on a shelf and look at them. Tell me why I need more of that in my life. I'll be happy to read it. Uh Aw. Not you, well, Joe. You can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, uh, drop us a comment on YouTube, Patreon, any place like that. And uh, yeah, we might just read it on the show. But everyone, until next Absolutely. week. Absolutely. We got a bounce out of here. Let me uh, see mm -hmm. if I can bring up some music. There we go. Look at this credit cool. button. Boop. Boop. Thank you again, Arthurin for all your help on LWW and it's your birthday today so have a lot of fun and thank you to all our wonderful patrons, our advisors Omega and Artharin our executive producers Fox Dog is in the house Atomic Ass our Chicago uh, kicks you know what you just said ass man <laughs> what? Now all of a sudden you're tapping the brakes on it I already gotta do one <laughs> sensor <Yeah. bit. laughs> and and all our wonderful patrons. Uh, we got Rohit in the house. We got Daisy in the house. Did you just watch like some and, 90s TV shows this week or something? So what, is that why everybody's in the house? Yeah, I guess. Honestly, I kind of did. I, I watched some old sitcoms. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Love you. Till next week. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>